Hi guys and welcome to my very overdue, my long overdue video updating on my experience with my breast augmentation. I think most of you should know that I have gone through this procedure. I did an announcement video on my main channel. Um, that was five months ago. That has gone very quickly. I thought I'd put this on my second channel so if people were more interested in following up then they can see that rather than shoving it in people's faces and putting it on my main channel. Unfortunately it wasn't quite documented how I wanted. Originally I planned to have my vlogging camera and filming the whole, well not the whole process, but you know my recovery and my experiences and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately I did lose my camera when I went to Leeds Festival which was very gutting for several things but that has happened. Um, also my before pictures were on there and that is now gone. The person, if they kept the memory card, has some very interesting viewing material. So instead I have just wrote notes and I'm going to talk through my experiences and be as in-depth as I can. Since then I have had two friends who have also had breast augmentations and I've been speaking about it with them to kind of refresh my memory and also can kind of compare if things were similar or different because, you know, different bodies, different implant sizes, this, that and the other. So I'm going to talk about their experiences as well. Unfortunately, they didn't want to be in this kind of video. There is loads of stigma around breast augmentations and there are people in their lives that don't know, so they don't want to share about it. To make up for it as well, I'm going to do a Q&A, so if there's any thing after watching this video that you still aren't sure about, any other questions, leave those below and then if there is enough questions I'll do a QA. and a If not then I'll just answer the comments and also I'll do a blog post alongside this so if I have forgotten anything it'll be in there and hopefully that'll be a bit more in depth. So let's get straight into it. In my announcement video at that point I was just before going to my pre-op so not long after that I think it was a couple of days after I filmed that video I had my pre-op so in this you visit the nurse and you have blood tests if needed I have thalassemia in my family and I know I have this but I didn't have a letter to actually prove I had it so I had to have a, another blood test for this also with the nurse they'll take your weight um, they'll explain kind of everything that's going to be happening to you and also um, I had my before pictures taken. After that I met with my point of contact and then I tried on sizes, that's when I did bring Jacqueline along with me and this is different to the first time so before I was trying on like the implants which was just very odd to kind of gauge how they'd sit because they are just a, a kind of a mound, a lump of the actual you know, implant. So with the sizes they have, it's more of like a teardrop style and then kind of more of a ski slope I want to say. So when you actually have the sizes on, you put on a tight top and you can actually more visualise how the boobs will look in your clothes. So that's the day I decided on my size. So I went for 375. I think the next size up was 400 or something like that. That just didn't look, it just looked too much. And upon speaking to the surgeon, he said the most that my body would be able to take is 400. So it is good that I went down to 375. So I have wrote down the implants I have with the Natural Inspira TSX. So that is soft touch and X is the profile. I went for ultra high profile. He said because of what I was starting with, the higher profile would give that more kind of natural slope that I was looking for. If I went for like a high profile or kind of, so ultra high, I guess you could imagine it like this and the profile, it starts going down, but then it starts becoming more rounded. And he said, if I went for the high profile, I would have the more of the fake kind of look of it being more rounded at the top. So I went home and I read through the reading material that I was given by the nurse. Two weeks prior to the surgery, you do not want to take any vitamins or anti-inflammatory drugs, things like ibuprofen. Also no eating garlic or drinking alcohol 48 hours before surgery. When you go for surgery, no makeup, jewellery, hair extensions, nail varnish. Six hours prior to surgery, you can't have any food and the only fluids you can have is water. And two hours prior to surgery is no water. So on the 26th of July, I went and I had my operation. I went in a taxi. I had to stay overnight as well, just because I didn't live close enough to the hospital. If I went home and something went wrong, I needed to be there to kind of just be observed. I also wrote down the things I packed, so a dressing gown, because when you have your surgery, you walk from your room to the operating theatre and the gown you're in is open back and it's 
paper and you've got your paper pants on and just for your modesty to just cover up the back of you a dressing gown. Also packed a phone charger, a portable charger in case my cable wouldn't be able to reach from the plug to my bed which it didn't so actually that was a really good shout. Pajamas, pants and also my surgical bra. I got the Macon bra and that was really good because with the Macon bra you buy it to your band and you don't buy it in cups so when you put it on it will actually stretch to the size of your bust and then as time goes on your swelling goes down you can then tighten it as well so I highly recommend a Macon bra that's the one Sarah told me to get as well that's one I recommended to my friends I had my surgery in the morning I think I was actually the first one and I was shown to my room put my stuff down and I changed into my beautiful paper pants and my paper gown thing. I waited a little while and then I had the surgeon come in so I got to see him before surgery where he checked I was okay, still happy with the sizes, then did some markings on me as well. After that I had the nurses come through, they gave me a lovely hairnet to wear as well. I put on my tube socks, they are to, like, I think they're like the ones that you wear when you go on the airplane, the ones that help prevent deep vein thrombosis and then I shuffled along to the operating theatre and I sat waiting in a side room before I was led in to the table and I lay down and I was really nervous the nurse was so lovely she held my hand because she could tell I was really nervous the anaesthetist he said to me how are you with needles and I was like oh don't say that because <laughs> I was like I really don't like needles and he looked at me and he was like but you're okay with tattoos? And I said, yes, I'm fine with tattoos. He goes, okay, this will just feel like a tiny little tattoo. What would you like, a star? Like, he was just really sweet, really put me at ease. He was just like, you won't feel a thing. He put it into the side of my hand here. Then he said, take a deep breath. And then in my head, I was worried because when I was reading up on hearing about people's experiences, some people said that the anesthetic hurt as it went through their body and all of these things. So I just kind of got myself worked up, but I literally took a deep breath. I could feel like a wave of something going over me. I couldn't even count to two and I was out. And I was worried that when I woke up, I would have a sore throat because again, from watching other people's videos, because when you're under, they put a tube down your throat to help you with breathing. And I was told this before. So when I first came um, to the hospital and the rooms weren't quite ready yet, I did speak to my anaesthetist. He just spoke me through warnings like, you know, there's potential that they could damage your teeth, um, checking if I had any fillings, anything that would come loose whilst he was putting that down my throat. So I knew of these things and that kind of made me worried. I was like, oh gosh, but everything was fine. Then was uh, woken up into like kind of the room that you come out of before you go back into your room. And it's so funny because I was so aware that I was speaking in slow motion because of all the anesthetic and the painkillers and stuff. And I said to them, I was like, I know I'm speaking in slow motion. This is really weird. And then they were like, would you like a look? So I looked down at them and the first thing I said was, yay, they're not too big. First thing I noticed, I've had this told to me by Sarah as well, is the nipples look really strange. They look kind of like rockets. They really like stood up. Like I've never seen them look like that before. That was very bizarre. And then the next thing I said was, did I snore? <laughs> which they laughed and said no you, you can't actually snore then I realized there was a tube and then I realized my throat was fine I had no pain I just felt very slow then they wheeled me off back into my room and then I think by the time it had been half an hour since my operation I was in my group chat with my friends I sent them pictures of like the brand new in me and I was fine I watched loads of YouTube videos, I was just talking to all my friends. I can't remember the times but it was very often that I'd have a nurse come in to check I was okay, check my blood pressure. Um, I did notice when the painkillers started wearing off <clears throat> that my heart rate and blood pressure, I'm not sure if it was heart rate or blood pressure but one of them, probably heart rate, had increased slightly. I took the painkillers as normal, I didn't lose my appetite, I ate loads and I felt fine. I remember touching them and they felt like rocks they were completely rock solid um very obviously swollen very up here um but that is to be expected my first night's sleep was basically non-existent i just had so much back pain from sleeping on my back usually i sleep on my side and sleeping upright after being sat upright basically all day because i had the surgery in the morning um 
it was really bad and the nurses were still checking me every however many hours it, it was less time as the night went on they didn't need to check on me as much and every time she came in I was like I can't sleep. I still had my drains in. The next day is when I had my drains to be taken out and that was the next thing I was really worried about. Again, following people's experiences. Some people saying it was one of the worst parts for them. Luckily I had lots of numbness as my skin was stretched quite a lot so I had lost basically most of the feeling. So when they took the drains out I didn't feel any pain. It was a very surreal feeling. Um, I could feel them coming out but it was just more of an odd feeling. So the next day I was free to leave, I got my taxi back and then I was sent home with painkillers which contained codeine and also antibiotics. This is when I came off my pill because antibiotics can affect your contraceptive pill and that's the point I decided to come off it so no longer on that, all out of my system. The antibiotics I they only were for like a couple of days, they was fine. For me recovering at home was more difficult I think compared to my friends just because I personally had a kind of reaction to the painkillers. My body doesn't like codeine so that wasn't the greatest experience for me. So the surgery was a Sunday and by Wednesday I'd come off the codeine tablets because I was not getting on with them. When you have an operation the anaesthetic will slow down your body anyway and the codeine will bung you up and I was in so much pain in my stomach. My stomach stuck out much more than my boobs. I believe I looked potentially six months pregnant. I had no pain in my boobs and I just felt so frustrated because nothing was painful there at all and it was my stomach. Came off codeine, was on paracetamol by the Wednesday which I hardly really needed. I was just drinking so much water, eating so much fruit, just eating things which would help me. Eventually everything was fine and eventually my stomach started to go down. By the Saturday, so six days later, um, I did try removing the Macon bra and kind of having a look at them and that made me feel so dizzy and spaced out. I think it was just the kind of... my body was still a bit like what's going on? It was still swollen and it just made me feel really dizzy and kind of faint the whole thought of it but I yeah I took it off and I did put a bra on. I had loads of bras from Waco, Freya, um, all ones which are non-wired so they are fine. I preferred wearing the Macon bra for the support and it's just a really comfortable bra but um, I wanted to kind of see how they looked in clothes. So I tried it on and my skin just looked, because my skin was so tight it looked like I had oiled my chest. That day of taking off the Macon bra and putting on a non-wired bra I think did actually help with the swelling because I found from the next day this didn't look quite as big. By the eight days I had my follow-up with the nurse where she took off the strips and had a look at the incisions. They're only five centimeters long. I forgot to also mention that I had my implants over the muscle, I didn't go under the muscle just because my surgeon said that they would give the most natural look for me. That was just his thought and I'm really happy with them by the way. She addressed some of my concerns. Because of the swelling I was really worried that I was going to have what it's not they're not officially called but like a mono boob because in between the swelling was so much that it wasn't flush against my chest wall it was really like forward and just I was worried that the skin had come away and she was like don't worry it's just swelling she advised to me with a finger to kind of push down and to help drain the fluid and the swelling around that kind of area I wasn't advised to do any massaging speaking to the nurse she also said that the kind of massage technique they believe is quite dated so they never advise to actually massage the implants the breast at all. 16 days after my operation I was contacted by Malibu and asked if I wanted to go to Ibiza which I was like yes. It was running up to my birthday so that in my head was like a pre-birthday celebration. I did tell the nurse and she said you know two weeks after the operation you're okay to fly short haul and it was 16 days later so that's fine. Bikini wise and swimsuit wise you want to have stuff with support and also no wiring and I had not the foggiest. Luckily I got some bits from Wheat 8 and their swimwear is amazing. They have really good supportive bikini tops and um, also swimsuits. I had quite a number of bikini tops and they were all really supportive with no underwiring so those were perfect. I also had a swimsuit. There was wiring but the wiring kind of sat lower 
um, so that one was completely fine. So if you are having an operation and are looking for underwear, swimwear without any wiring, I'll leave the ones I kind of went for below. So I'll include some pictures of uh, my boobs there. They are so high up so so high up. You can fly um, two weeks after surgery, short haul, you have to wait past 12 weeks to fly long haul. For the next six weeks I was sleeping on my back and um, a lot of the time I was still elevated and after a while it was fine, it didn't bother me. Then gradually I lowered myself down. Also in those six weeks you cannot swim so you can't expose your scars to any sunlight. I was back to work after eight days. I felt fine, you're not meant to carry things heavy at all, so basically in your handbag they're like don't carry anything more than your keys, your wallet and like an umbrella and a lipstick, like you don't want to carry things. Heavy doors I found really difficult and also with my arm movement I couldn't, like when I was at my desk sitting like this felt kind of weird and I was very limited with my arm movement at the time. This can vary from person to person, speaking to my other friend who had hers done, she did have a smaller implant though, she was kind of fine with her arm movement and she was also back to work within around eight days. So with showering, washing, the first week uh, my mum had to help me wash my hair, bless her. Also with showering you can't get the stitches wet, especially with my surgeon he doesn't want to get them wet at all. So I had shelly baths and then needed help like washing my back and those kind of things. I had those for six weeks. This is varying. I've My other two friends had very different advised things of showering, getting them wet. I was told if I got it wet to dry them with a hairdryer and then change them for a dry one. So that's what I did for the six weeks. I didn't get them uh, wet at all. Then after my six week checkup, so my second checkup, she removed them, said I didn't need to wear the uh, strips anymore. She also advised me to start putting things like rosehip oil onto them to help with scarring and guys my scars are so much like they're so faded now before they were red kind of angry looking they are deep surgical scars they can take up to two or so years to heal to fade and now they're so kind of grey and like they are visible but they have faded a lot quicker than I imagined. So for me I've had some people ask me what is feeling like my two of my friends I've had theirs done recently they are most feeling but they said they had a lot of like hypersensitivity in the nipples so the nipples really hurt my friend since has said she underneath she's lost a little bit of feeling for me I didn't have any feeling and it's slowly coming back it's now five months and I've got most feeling just some areas underneath I can't um I haven't fully got feeling back in this nipple but I have it in this one once you've had your surgery and you're slowly getting the feeling back, that's a really good sign. My final checkup with Transform was at the three months part and that was back with the surgeon and he said everything was good. When I undressed myself and showed him, he actually was very impressed with his work which filled me with confidence and he said everything was good, he kind of felt them, said everything is great, just don't lose weight because your weight fluctuating will affect how they look. And then I actually received my after photos because I had those, which I forgot to mention, at my six week checkup. Around the four month mark is when I started feeling kind of comfortable enough to go braless sometimes. If you don't feel right then it's not time and also you shouldn't be doing that before six weeks. But now like at the moment TMI I'm not wearing a bra and they don't feel weird, they feel fine. As time is going on they are just getting better and better. Whenever someone asks me how my boobs are getting on, I'm like, they're great. They're becoming softer, they're becoming more natural, and they're sitting better. Every time someone asks me, this is what I'm saying. This is five months and they are still changing. They have got so much lower com in comparison in the photos I first showed you of around two weeks after when I was in the bikinis and I was in Ibiza. They are like, they kind of sit like up here, they're so high and now they're so much lower, they're starting to ski slope, they're really dropping and kind of having more fullness in the lower pole. You know, it does look like I'm wearing a bra sometimes and that's because they're not real. But over time they will drop more and just kind of start looking more natural. When I lay down, they move, they kind of flatten more, they move around, they're really kind of jiggly and 
I'm really happy with them. They're a lot kind of softer than I imagined. Um, in my head, I always thought fake boobs were like rocks. That isn't the case. I still like sleeping in a non-wide bra. Um, the Macon bra sometimes I sleep in. Also, those Calvin Klein like bra things. Um, I like to sleep in those as well, just because when I kind of lay down, they kind of want to move, like get into your armpits and <laughs> this is a weird feeling so i still like to sleep with support as well it's just more comfortable as i mentioned i have had two of my friends who have had breast augmentations after i've had mine same surgeon same place at transform one of my friends she's a closer friend of mine and uh basically she got hers done because of how she saw such a positive effect and a change in my life much like myself i watched sarah's journey i know sarah and it made such a good impact on her life and it basically made me realise like I wanted to get it done and kind of confirm those feelings for me. So that's what happened to my other friend. Originally she went to transform but was going to see a different surgeon because she couldn't quite remember the one I said. And with that she didn't really have the best experience. With that surgeon she felt like she wasn't given as same detailed information as I got because watching like my video and also me talking to her I was telling her all the things that I was told she felt with her consultation she didn't really fully know what profile she was getting she kind of knew the size and then she was gonna have her pre-op and she just wasn't ready I told her to not give up and to see my surgeon Mr Milligross and she was so happy. She rang me up the next day and was just like, Leanne, I'm so happy. He was so good. I got the same little brochure as you did. Or, not brochure, kind of like notes. I'll show it to you. This is where the um, incisions go. They're five centimetres and they showed you the kind of markings and the measurements that they do. It's as old as wobble stitches. The scars will fade slowly over two years. There's diagrams of what the implant looks like behind the breast tissue and then behind the muscle. And then also the different implants. So there's, so there's touch responsive and there's soft touch. I went for soft touch. These ripple less, but they can flip if the skin is loose. So all these things, advantages and disadvantages. And I really felt like I was talked through it. I knew so much. I knew like my breast diameters and all these measurements because he took them and let me see them. He spoke about um, how like the profiles and then also about the um, width of implants and I just felt like I was really educated and I really knew what I was getting. So if you are someone who is looking into getting consultations, make sure you feel really comfortable with your surgeon and if you're not, then request to see another one. Then she looked up at reviews of my surgeon and saw nothing bad at all so so I think it really does make a difference if you can talk to someone who has had breast augmentation a friend because you can just quiz them about it like I was messaging Sarah so much and like even afterwards I was like is this normal like this is happening to me like blah 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 I'm like I'm worried because at the time I just felt like mine weren't dropping but it's because you know my skin had to stretch a lot more so it's going to take longer for mine to drop so things will really vary to person to person also like when I visited the surgeon and I had all these thoughts in my mind because I was reading all these different forums and this that and the other and stuff that I've heard which someone may experience does not necessarily apply to me it's best to listen to your surgeon and not to rely on stuff you've been listening to me saying or whatever you read this is just guidelines of stuff that's happened in my experience but you should really trust your surgeon because it's going to vary it's going to vary on what you're starting off with with your breast tissue with your skin type with your skin's thickness with the implant size you want to go with the profile like there's so much to consider and they're there to talk you through it and they're really going to be helpful and they're going to help you get what you want so am i happy that i had a breast augmentation yes beyond words I am very very happy um, am I more confident confidence isn't really something that I've noticed I just feel so comfortable in my body and we both said exactly the same thing without me even saying what I thought to her she said that she just feels comfortable and it feels like that is just what her body should have been and I completely agree that's how I feel about myself now even on my Instagram people were still asking me have you had your boob job yet and I found that quite funny personally because I felt before there really wasn't much to me um, and now I felt like you could visibly see a difference people were messaging me like DMing me like emailing me and asking me questions um, and I was saying to them I have had it done um, 
I thought it was quite obvious personally and some people were like oh I thought you were wearing just a really good bra um, so I like that they must look reasonably natural for people to be questioning whether I've had them done or not. Now occasionally if I wear a low cut dress people ask has she had them done yet um, these kind of questions so those make me feel good because it's like I, I know they're gonna look to a degree fake because they are fake but having people sometimes thinking they're real is very flattering. I can still wear all the same clothes I wore before I just feel more comfortable in them. I've had loads of you messaging me um, saying that my previous videos really helped you so I'm really glad those helped and I hope this helps as well. I've had uh, girls I've been talking to supporting them with their journeys, asking me previously like running up to their breast augmentations and quite a few of them have had them now so I'm really thrilled. That I've been there to help them and to reassure them because I think you're gonna get it done, you're gonna get it done but I think you just need that reassurance um, so Yes, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, if there's any questions you still have, then please leave those down below. Um, also check the down bar. I'll probably leave a load of information in there that I might not have said. Also check the blog post. But if I have enough questions um, of stuff I haven't answered, I'll make a Q&A video. If not, I will just answer your comments. So I hope this was informative and I'll see you guys soon. So from the title, I wanted to do kind of an update because I've been away from YouTube kind of for like four months um, and loads of stuff has just happened 